Hey, everyone. Welcome back. It's Anna, and I'm so happy to be with you today. I uh, am sitting in my home office on a Monday morning. I do record these podcasts um, a lot on a Monday morning just to make sure that I'm in the right vibe with you guys. And uh, so I hope you had a great weekend. I did. And, um, you know, last week was uh, actually last couple weeks have been just crazy. I, I don't know, like, did we have a full moon? I'm not even sure, but, or was something in retrograde? It's just been a little wild. Maybe, you know, you're feeling it too, or, or whenever you're listening to this, I, I don't know. But um, for me, the past few weeks have been full of different challenges. And, um, you know, listen, I, <laughs> I met a friend last week, we were able to get together after work for a couple of drinks. And, um, you know, some appetizers, which is a fun thing to do, of course. And she is the executive director for an agency. I'm, um, you know, in a in a CEO capacity with a few different companies. And so we relate a lot, not only on a personal level, but professionally too. And it was funny, we were talking and she was just being honest about some different challenges she was having, you know, within her organization, both internally and externally, and I totally could relate and was sharing some challenges. And then the next thing I know, you know, we're talking about, um, you know, stuff going on with our kids and stuff going on with our, our partners, our spouses. Um, and, you know, we've all been there, right? We start talking about things that are making us frustrated. We're talking about things that we don't like, you know, and really, what are we doing? We're complaining, right? And at the time, you know, I felt really like connected to her and I think she did too. And I left that evening and got thinking about it. And that's what I, I want to talk to you about today. I'm sure I'm not the only one, right? I'm sure I'm not the only one that finds themselves getting into sort of a, um, I don't want to say spiral, but getting on a run, right? Getting on on a on a tear of things that are just frustrating us, right? Things that are making us unhappy, things that are challenging, right? It could be about people. It could be, you know, maybe, I don't know, your neighbor comes over and there's something that she always does or says that frustrates you. Um, there's a challenge, you know, your kids don't listen or it's the same conversation all the time. And we complain to each other. And when we have a moment to step back, and this is what I want to talk to you about today, is this a positive thing that we find ourselves in or no? Is this really negative? And there's a great phrase that I have used professionally before. And, and the phrase is complaining is a garbage magnet. Complaining is a garbage magnet, meaning that when you start to complain, what happens? You throw that out there into the universe or you sit there with someone and you start kind of unloading and sharing your frustrations about a person or a situation. You start complaining and that's what you get back. You get them complaining too about something going on, right? Because then it's like, oh, I know, I know exactly how you feel. Let me tell you what happened to me. And so it just creates this magnetic force where complaining breeds an environment of more complaining and we don't line up to start to solve the problem. And I want to kind of unpack this today because listen, we're all human and this has all happened to us before. And yet if, if I could just give you an opportunity today to listen to this and I could encourage you to shift your perspective just a little bit, if I could encourage you to look at this from a different angle, I, I think some cool stuff could happen because of it. And, and I think that it would open us up to look, because I put myself in this group, right? I, I consider myself to be an intelligent person, a highly skilled professional, whatever those things are that are in my wheelhouse, right? I do, I do with mastery. I'm a coach. Uh, I, I get on here and talk to you guys every week. And I, I try to do my best to be an influence, a teacher, a consultant, and a coach. And yet I'm just as human. And so I don't always get it right either. And one of the things that really became clear to me as I was preparing for this today is that when we start complaining, 
not only is it a garbage magnet, but is it a waste of time? Because the person that you choose to share all this with, unload on, complain to, is not the is not the right person. They're the wrong person to even share this with because they're not the problem. They weren't part of that situation. So how productive are we really being? Now, again, there's always room to vent a little bit. And I think that um, we definitely need to sometimes get it off our chest and we need to vent, but then we have to move past that into resolution, into finding the solution. And really, when we think about it, the people that we start complaining to are not really able to help us. So is this a waste of our time? Is it really being productive? Or are we just falling into now a whole other trap of being a gossip? I know this is like, yeah, you realize and you're like, oh gosh. So now I start telling my friend all the stuff that, you know, my husband does to aggravate me and um, that just becomes like gossip. Or I tell my mom all the things that, you know, someone else does. Now I'm gossiping about that person. And so I think the reason we do it, there's a few reasons and, and maybe there are different reasons at different times. There are different, you know, reasons why some of us, you know, engage in this whole, you know, complaining cycle. And I think one of them is just sheer frustration, right? And and that I understand because we all get frustrated. And I think that right up there with food and water, we all have a need to be seen and heard. You know, we all have this need to have somehow, you know, someone say, I hear you and I support you, right? I see you and I understand. I mean, that, like I said, when I was with my friend the other day, I'm not going to lie. You know, I think it felt good to know that she was listening to me. And I think it felt good to know that she wanted to support me. And I think that, you know, that happens when we get into an emotional, you know, or a conversation that has emotional context, right? Uh, because, you know, when we can share with people things that um, bring up different feelings for us, we're able to express ourselves and and then we're able to get that person's empathy, get that person to, you know, pat us on the back or, you know, say, I understand, right? And so it it kind of creates a little bit of a bond. And so I think there are times when we even subconsciously get into this whole like, you know, cycle of, of complaining because we're always, we're not always good at sharing our true feelings and we're not always able to go to the person who frustrated us in the first place and express ourselves. And so when we can share it with someone else and we get into this, you know, conversation and they're able to kind of make us feel better, even for a moment you know, it validates us somehow. And, and to say that none of us are looking for validation would just be unfair. I think we all find, we all need sometimes a way to feel a little validated. And so, you know, in having that conversation with my friend the other day, yeah, we bonded over that for a minute. It's not, it's not the core of our friendship. It's certainly not why we are friends. There's so many more positive, wonderful reasons why I'm friends with her. But listen, for, for that moment over a glass of rosé, I felt like, okay, she gets me, right? I mean, I can't be the only one who could ever, you know, say that they felt that way. But let's get back to really what I think my core message is for all of us in, in, in this conversation is that when we, when we are frustrated with something that happens or with someone how can we get into solution mode faster? How do we take sometimes, you know, the time that we need to just vent a little bit, which again, like I said, is understandable, but move into solution mode, right? Because again, after we blow off some steam, what next, right? Can we get into solution mode? And, and more importantly, is there an opportunity for us to be more courageous and actually go back to the person who might be the root of our frustration and actually talk to them about what's bothering us. Could we be able to go back and give feedback to our spouse, our kids, our sister, our brother, friend, coworker, whatever? 
could we actually stop avoiding the issue and be able to tell them how whatever happened made us feel? And I get it. It's not easy. That could be tough. It's a hard conversation. I mean, there's there's books that have been written on this. Um, and, you know, I think that having one of the books that comes to mind, you know, I was going to say having a fierce conversation, right? That's Susan Scott's book, Fierce Conversation. Um, there's a lot of, I think, great tools in that book to help you understand how to have a conversation with someone when it could be challenging and when it's, when it's tough, right? Because um, there's a lot of vulnerability entwined in that, but really if we don't have the conversation and we just allow ourselves to be frustrated, whether we keep it to ourselves or we share it outward with someone else, how does the problem ever go away? Right? Because I, you know, when nothing changes, nothing changes. So where do you want to be in a year from now? Right. Do you still want to be in that same pattern with that person or that situation and nothing really has ever moved forward? So. I think I think it's about acknowledging with that person or even with ourselves what it is about the situation that is causing us so much frustration. And and it, it really does start with the awareness because you can't fix what you don't face. So you know, again, if we could be braver about having that conversation, even though it could be awkward at first, even though it could be challenging, you, you, I think can set it up in a way too, where the person understands where you're coming from. And I think too, it's about mutual respect and saying, listen, you know, I just want to share with you some feedback and, and I just, I need to be honest with you about, what's happening or what happened or how that made me feel. Right. I know this is like such adult stuff. <laughs> it's, it's not, it's, it seems simple. It just might not be easy. Right. And my motivation for this is, is that I think over time when we experience too, you know, frustration for too long, a lot of negative stuff can come from that. Right. We can find ourselves super stressed. We can find ourselves, you know, even growing resentment towards that person or situation. And we get further and further away from fixing the problem when that, that goes on for too long. It's kind of like, you know, I know you've heard this phrase before, right? It's like putting the poison in your water um, and, and, you know, or putting, putting the poison in the water, thinking that you might be poisoning the other person, but it just poisons you. I got that wrong. It, it doesn't matter. Guys. I got that wrong, but you know what I mean, right? It's like, you can't drink the poison, uh, but that's what it is. Holding on to all of these feelings is like holding on to the poison. And, and instead of avoiding the conversation, if we could get more courageous around being honest with ourselves and with them, I think we would be able to grow. And I think the relationships around us would grow too. And, and perhaps the other person could have a growth moment as well. You know, if, if you don't make me aware of what I'm doing and how it's affecting you, then I have no understanding and therefore I have no motivation to change what I'm doing. But at least if you give me an opportunity to know how whatever I'm saying, whatever I'm, I'm doing or not doing is affecting you. Well, now I have, I have a chance to fix it. And that also means I get an opportunity to grow too. And, and so that's a big part of all of this is, is really being open to the growth that can come from honest conversations. And again, it's not easy. I, I totally understand that, you know, it's not easy. I have, a lot of tools in my toolbox. And I sometimes have to really, you know, examine my, my courage and my willingness to be open with someone and have those tough conversations. But again, the magic that can come from that could really change the dynamics of, of our life in such a profound way. And when I'm, forced to think about it, like in a moment like this, I would much rather be known as the problem solver and the fixer than necessarily the complainer, right? And so if complaining is, um, you know, negative, and if that goes on too long, then we could honestly see how that could create some toxicity in our relationships. 
And so I think that we have to understand number one, why we do it and then figure out, you know, ways that we can move past it. And, you know, listen, life's not perfect. We know it. There's things that happen every day that frustrate us. It could be, you know, coming in and missing that parking spot. It could be running late for a meeting. It could be missing a deadline. Um, it Whatever it is, there are, there are lots of things that happen throughout our day that don't go exactly according to plan. But I think that we have to choose a healthy way to respond to it. And I just have to believe that excessive complaining is just not healthy. I think it just creates a lot of negative effects. And I think that it, it keeps us focused on the problem and it keeps us focused on ourselves rather than looking outside of ourselves to create solutions. And um, I think that's how things can get done. I think when we look outside ourselves and we look at solutions, then we can move forward in a way that I, I think really opens up and creates opportunity, right? So how do we, all right, so look, I believe that this is making sense to some of you, totally. I believe that you're listening to this and you're like, yes, yes, and yes. Okay, so then how do we get better at it, right? Like how do we stop complaining? And even though we recognize it might be a normal part of our communication pattern, how do we help ourselves become more aware of it and decide to, to either never complain again, which might be a big, a big thing to say, but at least limit how much time we spend there. Right. And so how do we how do we get into a better um, a better way of processing what's happening around us? And how do we develop some strategies to become more positive and less focused on complaining? All right, so if this is ringing true to you, the way that it did for me when I realized that I was definitely in a trap in the last couple of weeks of being a little negative and complaining a little too much, um, then here are some ways that you can kind of get out of it in, the, in some of the ways I, I looked at getting out of it. I can just share some of my thoughts with you here. Uh, number one, like I said a, a little while ago, it just it starts with awareness. It absolutely starts with us being more alert to what we're thinking and especially to what we're saying and what we're saying to other people. Okay, we're going to take that from the top. Well, not the top, just that last part. Okay, so if a lot of what I'm saying to you today makes sense and you are, you know, listening to me and saying, okay, I, I get it and what can we do about it? Um, here are a few things that I I started to think about in the last couple of weeks or when I realized that the last couple of weeks have been, um, you know, stop, cancel. Sorry, Christina. Let's go again. I'm going to pick it up from the tip the tips to be more positive. That's where well this is <laughs> a challenge all of a sudden. Hold on. All right. So, if you are ready to focus less on complaining and focus more on really just looking at like the positive things happening around you and more importantly about being in solution mode, then here are a couple of things that I could share with you that might help. Certainly it starts with awareness. I think we have to be aware that we're in a loop and that's usually, I, I don't know about you, but that's what I find happens to me is that we get in the loop and we, we create a, almost like a sensitivity to you know, things that frustrate us. And suddenly when you allow one or two things to creep in, suddenly there's four or five things that are frustrating you. And so we just have to be aware of that when we find ourselves in that loop and, and maybe ask ourselves a little bit about what's happening. And I think our awareness gives us an opportunity to fix it and, and really interrupt the pattern, right? So just become aware that you're complaining too much 
become aware when you get slip, when you start to slip into that um, pattern so that you can then move into the next step, right? Which, which is basically just rewiring your thoughts. And, you know, it could be in a, in a lot of ways, it could be journaling. Maybe you need to kind of just express yourself on paper and figure out exactly what is causing all of this frustration and complaining. Because, you know, another thing that could be happening, you're complaining about something or someone, but that's really not the problem. It's just that you're more sensitive to something else that's really been bothering you. So it could be that you have to get to the root cause and, and giving yourself the time and space to, you know, get your feelings out and, and do it on paper or even, even speak it in a, a recorder if you want. But rather than sharing it with someone else who really, like I said, can't be a part of the solution, um, I think we just have to get it out on paper and then start to figure out what's really happening here, what's really causing us to feel this way. And then you could start to brainstorm solutions and seek the, the, the remedy, which probably will be to have that conversation with the person who really has the power to, to help you fix the situation, right? Um, and, and I think that, you know, there could be ways to look at that conversation and, and figure out how to have that conversation in an open, healthy way. And, and that really, I think, again, is going to give that person the same ability to reflect. Um, and I, and I know sometimes it's easier said than done, but I think that we owe it to them to at least share with them what's happening. Cause I think most of the time people are unaware of the energy they're bringing into a situation. They're unaware of the things that they're saying and the impact it's making. And, and so if this is truly important enough to you, then be your own advocate and be willing to share with them what's going on. Um, another thing that I would say, um, because again, even though I can look back at that you know, time with my friend the other day and I could say, yeah, you know, she was really listening to me and she felt, you know, I, it felt like she was really supporting me. She also then started to complain and I did the same for her, but, you know, we could have talked about a lot of other things. We could have really had even more fun together if we focused on a bunch of other things to talk about. And so I think getting out of that complaining cycle just means that you're open up, you open yourself up to a lot, a lot of great things, right? Other things that you could be putting your time on. So yeah, so advocate for yourself and, and realize that, you know, you could be using your time in other ways. And listen, if, if you have to distance yourself from a person or a situation, because that's what you need for a moment to, to gain clarity, then maybe that's an answer too. Um, and, and know that you have to do what you can to protect your own environment. And so I think we have to look at, again, you know, what is the purpose of us complaining? What are we seeking? And how do we find that in a different way? Sometimes we complain because we just do want to release the steam valve. Well, maybe you could do that by getting in a workout or, uh, you know, um, taking a walk or going to, you know, yoga, meditation. There could be other ways to do that. And so, I think, you know, that will help if we look for a different outlet and, you know, again, avoid the co-complaining so that we're not creating this garbage magnet situation, you know, limit our complaining so we can focus on other things. And um, at, again, here, here's the thing. I love having these conversations with you. I don't necessarily have all the answers all the time because I'm on the same journey with you. I'm trying to figure it out as I go along too. And so I'm sharing, you know, some ahas I had around this, this whole complaining thing. And, you know, I think that I just needed to get on here and be honest with you as a way to break my own pattern, right? Because instead of, you know, learning to feel good around complaining, which I know sounds crazy, but honestly, that's what happens. We start to feel good around it subconsciously, I wanted to really get clear about there could be a more productive way to handle it. And so I trust that you found that this connected with you too. And so together, let's figure out a way 
that we can move past the negativity and into something that is much more solution-based and really to support each other. So um, listen, I think that, you know, the purpose of this podcast is to help you live a bigger life. And so I trust this was helpful in, in you you know, gaining some clarity about ways that you can improve your relationships, improve your life, um, ways that we can limit the negativity, limit the complaints so that you can enjoy life more, right? Because ultimately your life is what you make of it. And so if there was something I said today that will help you to live in a more positive way, then that makes me really excited. And that's why I do this podcast. So if you find value in this and you find this to be helpful, please do me a favor and share this with somebody because I'm sure there's someone who needs to hear this message today too. So I would love it if you could share our podcast, if you would rate it, if you would subscribe to it. Um, that is good for everybody. And that allows us to really reach more people. And I appreciate you for doing that. So thanks again for joining me. I will see you soon. Take care.